and probably OM is going to solve that first, and then we're going to copy homework, and we'll have the physical world doing this recursive self-improvement as we go. And I think that's going to happen, right? Not in 100 years, only in 20 years. That's definitely going to happen. So that's Jim Fenn, NVIDIA's senior research scientist and AI agent's lead. And he's basically saying that within 20 years, we'll have self-improving robots, like full-on recursive self-improvement, but in the physical world. It sounds insane, but it's not the only wild thing that happened in AI this week. We also got robot boxing, models getting infinite memory upgrades, Google quietly launching a new Firebase Studio, and even AI assistants that can play video games with you. Let's get into it. So that snippet you heard earlier, that was just a glimpse of what Jim Fan shared during his talk at NVIDIA's GTC event. He was asked what excites him most about the future of robotics, and he pointed to two things, robots accelerating scientific discovery and robots that can recursively self-improve. Here's the full clip, it's about a minute and a half, but hearing it in context really puts his vision into perspective. And keep in mind, this isn't just some random futurist making guesses. Jim Fan is one of the people actually building this future at NVIDIA. So 20 years from now, there are a couple of things that I'm super excited about that I think is just not that much uh, far away. One is uh, robotics uh, accelerating science, right? So I have some friends in biomed, and it's just so time consuming to do one experiment and so laborious. Like all of those PhD students need to be in the lab, right? Attending to uh, those like mouse, right? All those like, like you know, dishes of, of, of cells. How about we automate all of that, right? Automating science. Then maybe all the medical research will not cost a billion dollars to do. They will be scaled up because we get this API to accelerate the physical world. Right, using intelligence. Perhaps that will be Groot uh, version 10 or something, I hope. Right, so that is one thing I'm super excited about. And the other thing is robotics automating robotics itself. Right, so why don't we have robots fixing each other? Right, so we, we see all of those big factories making the robots, but how about the robots themselves assembling the next generation of the robots? And I don't think this is science fiction at all, because actually in the LOM community, again, they are ahead of us, unfortunately, but in the LOM community, People are studying AutoML, meaning that can we prompt these LOMs to do deep research, right, to find the next best transformer, to find the next best architecture for intelligence itself. And people are actively doing this as we speak. And probably LOM is going to solve that first, and then we're going to copy homework, and we'll have the physical world doing this recursive self-improvement as we go. And I think that's going to happen, right, not in 100 years, only in 20 years. That's definitely going to happen. So let's break this down. He makes two bold predictions, robots accelerating science and robots improving themselves. And if you look at what NVIDIA is already building, it's not just talk. They recently unveiled Groot N1, the world's first open generalist humanoid robot foundation model. Groot N1 is trained to understand both the physical world and language, and it's designed to be adaptable across tons of tasks. It can already pick up and place thousands of household objects, and even collaborate with another robot to complete more complex goals. So while we're still a ways off from robots actually building other robots and recursive self-improvement, as Jim said, LLMs will likely be the first to pull it off. We're already seeing the early signs of this. This is now the third time I talk about this paper, but OpenAI recently introduced PaperBench, a new benchmark designed to evaluate the ability of AI agents to replicate state-of-the-art AI research. This benchmark, which is really more of a framework, sets the stage for AI agents that can literally conduct machine learning research on their own. So far, the highest score comes from Claude 3.5 Sonnet at around a 21% success rate. But what's crazy is that the human baseline for PhD ML researchers is only 41.4%, which means these models are already half as good as real machine learning researchers at reproducing machine learning research. Like, I think we'll definitely get there within the next 20 years. Also, over on my Patreon, I broke down a recent paper from DeepSeek where their model was trained to improve its own answers without retraining, just by learning from its own feedback. So yeah, LLMs are clearly on their way to figuring out how to actually self-improve. And the implications of that are insane, for obvious reasons. But the robotic space? 
Well, it might not be that far behind. As we've seen, these robots are becoming more general, able to take on a wider and wider range of real-world tasks. And their movement is also becoming more dynamic and flexible. Here's Unitree's G1 robot performing the world's first standing side flip from a humanoid robot. But something you probably haven't seen, robots fighting. Here's Unitree's G1 robot once again, but this time it's literally boxing. I mean, someone needs to send this to Dana White. Humanoid robot boxing might actually be a big thing in the future. A new company called REC, short for Robot Embodied Combat, just announced plans for a real-life robot fighting league, where humans control humanoid robots in the ring. The details are still scarce, but they seem to be gearing up for a big announcement in the next couple of days. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this. Now, shifting gears a bit, OpenAI quietly announced a major update to ChatGPT's memory feature. It can now reference all of your past chats to provide more personalized responses. So OpenAI basically just released infinite memory. I mean, it's not infinite memory in the sense that ChatGPT remembers everything you said at all times, but it does have access to your full conversation history and can pull from it when needed. Which means it can now build a persistent understanding of your preferences, your tone, your past questions, and respond with way more context. We're literally living in the movie Her now. Except, instead of everyone falling in love with their AI's voice, your AI just remembers that you like oat milk and that you've asked it the same question three times this week. Now, moving on, a new AI startup called Deep Cogito emerged from stealth this week, releasing Cogito V1 Preview, a suite of five open source large language models ranging from 3 billion to 70 billion parameters. And keeping with the theme of this video, they state, the LLMs are trained using iterated distillation and amplification, IDA, a scalable and efficient alignment strategy for general superintelligence using iterative self-improvement. So again, we're starting to see actual self-improving capabilities being built into LLMs. They further mention that while better reasoning alone might bring us closer to AGI, to reach artificial general superintelligence, we need to overcome what they call the inherent limitations of human overseers. That's where iterated distillation and amplification, or IDA, comes in. It's their proposed method for getting past those limitations by having the model iteratively improve itself while integrating more advanced reasoning over time. Now, this isn't just some theoretical concept, they're already seeing results. As you can see, their largest model, Cogito 70B, outperforms DeepSeek R1 across virtually every benchmark, from MMLU to math. It's even outperforming Meta's new Llama 4 Scout model on LiveBench. So yeah, this is definitely a company I think we'll be hearing a lot more about. And I'm genuinely excited to see where they take this next. We also got another super small, efficient, and high-performing model this week from Moonshot AI. They dropped Kimi VL and Kimi VL Thinking, two open-source vision language models that are surprisingly strong, especially considering they're only 3 billion parameters. Kimi VL is already showing comparable performance to GPT-40 on some key benchmarks. And Kimi VL Thinking, the reasoning model, is absolutely blowing away everything else in his class, especially when it comes to efficiency. So definitely a great option if you're looking for a compact model for local use or edge deployment. Alright, now let's talk about Google. So as you've probably seen, they made a ton of major announcements this week around AI agents, from agent space to their agent development kit, and even a new agent-to-agent -agent protocol that lets agents collaborate and share tools. Now, we broke all of that down in the last video, but what flew a bit under the radar for most people was the launch of something called Firebase Studio. This is Google's cloud-based agentic dev environment powered by Gemini. So I'm not a developer myself, but from what I understand, this is essentially a cloud-based environment where developers can easily build, test, and deploy agent-powered apps. It's powered by Gemini, and the idea is you describe what you want in natural language, and Gemini brings that vision to life using the tools it has access to inside the studio. One of the more wild examples I've seen is this guy asking it to create an app that turns any topic into a mind map. He just described what he wanted in plain English, and within minutes, Gemini cooked up the whole thing, which is honestly kind of insane. That said, it's still very early days for Firebase Studio, and I've seen a lot of developers point out that right now, it can't really do much more than what today's frontier models are already capable of. 
And while that's true, what makes this so interesting isn't what it can do right now, it's what it's setting up for. Google is clearly laying the groundwork for a future where apps aren't just built by humans, they're built and maintained by agents. Tools like Firebase Studio, Agent Space, and the Agent to Agent Protocol all point to a larger vision, where agents don't just run code, they generate it, deploy it, monitor it, and collaborate with each other inside a shared infrastructure. So yeah, it might not look like much yet, but this could be the start of a whole new way we build and ship software, one where agents do most of the heavy lifting. Now, speaking of Google, they also unveiled their next generation of TPUs, which they're calling Ironwood, coming later this year. Compared to their first publicly available TPU from 2018, Ironwood delivers a 3600x performance boost, which is just wild. And just this week, Google signed a deal with Ilya Sutskever's new company, Safe Super Intelligence, giving them access to Google's in-house TPU infrastructure. NVIDIA also jumped in on this super secretive deal, but beyond that, we really don't know much. So SSI is quickly becoming one of the most valuable AI startups in the world, and we still have no idea what they're actually building. All we know is they're apparently working on one thing, safe super intelligence. Alright, now before we close out the video, there were a few more interesting updates I wanted to show you guys. Starting with Pika Twists. This new feature lets you manipulate any character or object in the scene, while keeping everything else perfectly intact. It's a small detail, but a big leap. I mean, instead of regenerating an entire video from scratch, we're now getting real-time, editable control over individual elements. This is a step toward treating AI-generated scenes more like 3D environments, where you can tweak, direct, and even animate inside them. The level of creativity this will unlock is insane to think about. Now, next up, we had Hicksfield AI introducing Hicksfield Mix. This new feature lets you combine multiple motion controls in a single shot, including moves that aren't even possible with real-world cameras. So again, we're starting to get more directorial control over AI-generated video, and not just in ways that mimic traditional filmmaking, but in ways that actually go beyond it. And finally, we got a glimpse of a new AI assistant built for Minecraft. And honestly, it's one of the coolest ideas I've seen all week. You start building a house, and it figures out what you're doing and jumps in to help. What makes this different is that it wasn't trained with RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback, like most assistants today. Instead, it's based on something called assistance games, where the AI doesn't know your goal and has to collaborate with you to figure it out. So rather than trying to solve your whole problem in one go, this assistant stays uncertain, asks smart questions, and learns from what you do. They're calling it Assistance Zero, and in tests, people preferred it over traditional AI helpers, not just because it was smarter, but because it actually felt like it was helping. So this approach is super interesting, because since it's basically learning on the fly, you can imagine that eventually it might be able to play any game, not just Minecraft. And taking this even further, it's not just about Minecraft or video games. This kind of approach could reshape how AI assistants work in general. Instead of trying to guess your entire goal from one prompt, future assistants could learn over time, stay uncertain when needed, and actually collaborate with you like a real teammate. Anyway, that's all for today. Let me know which part of the video you enjoyed the most. Was it Jim Fan's wild prediction about self-improving robots, Google's Firebase Studio, or something else entirely? Drop a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.